Hello, my name is Fuzzy Bob, and today I am interviewing Fuzzy Bob. Hello, Fuzzy Bob. Hello, Fuzzy Bob. Question number one. Who is reading the story tonight? Mimi. No, it's Archie. Lord Papa. No, it's Archie. Monty. Archie. Robin. Archie. Pass. Question two. What is the story tonight? Fish pie and a head strimmer. Yes. Brilliant. I mean, no. Boo. It's Blubbering Bertha by David Williams. I'm good at this. Oh, rubbish at this. I rubbish at this. Question three. What is your favourite colour? Blue. Uh, uh, with some red in it. How much red in it? Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. So in actual fact, it's red. Yes, correct. Last question. What time is the story tonight? 30 minutes past six o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. Precisely? Precisely, 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 precisely. Brilliant. Thank you, Fuzzy Bob. Thank you, Fuzzy Bob. You are the best. You are. You're the best. No. You are! You're the best! No, you are! Sun. Right, son. Son, son. Tie straight, tie straight. Great. We're good to go. We're good to go, everyone. Settle down. We're good to go. Oh, oh, look at this one going through on my pillows. That's nice, isn't it? My pillows are all striped. Hello, viewer. Two viewers. Hello. Nice to see you. Oh, to see you nice. Oh, oh, there's an old one. It's an old day, but a goodie. It's warm today, isn't it? I don't know why I have my scarf on. Peter. Hello, Peter. Nice to see you this evening. Right regular, you. You're right regular. I love it. And Anna's watching. Hello, Anna. Hi. Hi, fella. <laughs> Have you had a nice day, everyone? Enjoyed the sunshine? I did. I went out burrowing. I went and got my nose down into the burrow. Didn't find any termites, though. No. But that's not bad, because I don't really eat termites. Hi, Guy. Oh, my friend Guy. Lovely. And Julian. Smashing. Smashing. Oh. Yeah, so I went out burrowing and smelt the roses. And, and, and believe me, you can smell the roses with this thing. I'm telling you, you can smell the roses. Mm. Ah. Hands up, baby, hands up. Give me your heart, give me, give me your heart, give me, give me hands up, baby hands up, give me your heart, give me, give me your heart, give me, Stacey, hello, so nice of you to drop by, and Andy, oh I like you Andy, I've heard you like me, <laughs> oh that's nice, <laughs> you enjoy me shows, <laughs> hands up, baby hands up, right, so we've got a grand total of eight people so far, but that's good, because it's quality, not quantity, that counts, nine, yay, we're almost in double figures, yay, Cara! Cara says hello! Oh, oh, lovely! Hello, Cara! Nice to see you! Well, I can't see you, but you can see me! <laughs> oh, I hope you enjoy my story tonight! It's a good one! It's a good one! And you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, oh, by the way, just to introduce you, uh, in case you've not been to any of our broadcasts before, my name is Archie Armadillo. My name's Archie Armadillo, in case you didn't get it. And I am an armadillo. 
It's true. It's true. Welcome to Wordle Durdle Ding Dong. And today is quite an interesting day because today, if you didn't already know, oh, Susan's in Florida. Oh, it's sunny there too in Florida as well. Except there's a lot of Lots of, lots of animals there that don't really like armadillos. <laughs> yeah, like, like crocodile, for one. Uh, no, no, it's not crocodile. No, 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 that's not Florida. It's a, it's an alligator. Yeah, yeah, well, see you later, alligator. <laughs> so today, in case you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, is International Respect for Chicken Day. Somebody actually sorted out an international respect for chicken day. So we're going to have a second or two respect for chicken. How are your heads? There we go. Respect. Respect is due. Now, a couple of shout outs as well. Tonight, I'd like to shout out to Judge. Hello, Judge. Nice to see you. And also, we'd like to shout out to Marlo and Santi, who are down in Winchester. Hello, Marlo. Hello, Santi. I hope you enjoy the show. So, let's get cracking, shall we? This is a good one tonight. This one is called Bertha the Blubberer. And this is by a guy called David Walliams. Here we go. <clears throat> Bertha was a blubberer. She would sob. She would howl. She would bawl. The little girl was only eight years old and she must have spent seven of them blubbering. Anything and everything would set her off. You ready for the list? <gasps> Loud noises, silence, bright lights, the dog, d dogs, small dogs, large dogs, the dark, medium-sized dogs, rodents of any kind, frogs, toads, especially tadpoles, bouncing balls, fireworks, dust, the heat, the cold, ducks, geese and swans, orange juice with bits in it, burnt toast, tettle, kettles, stickers, wet grass, bench park benches, men with tattoos, low flying aircraft, the colour purple, Cat hair, rain, water slides, mud, anything made of plastic, Christmas crackers, raisins in raisin biscuits, bouncy castles, smells of any kind, even nice ones, clouds, moustaches, vegetables, burps, mono brows, nostril hair, ear hair, and anyone in a hat. The little girl had a younger brother called William. From the day he was born, Bertha was beastly to him. She hated having to share her parents' attention. And one day, Bertha discovered a wonderful thing. She could cry and blame it on her little brother. And the more she cried, the more attention she got. So the girl thought of more and more wicked plans to make William look horrid. Bertha's favorite ploy was to cry and cry and cry all alone in her bedroom, pretending her brother had hurt her. When mother bounced up the stairs to see what was wrong, Bertha would blub through a river of tears. Mama, it was William. He pinched me. He pinched me hard on the arm. Sometimes she would elaborate on the lie by actually pinching herself. Bertha would then offer up a very tiny red blotch on her arm as evidence of her brother's beastliness. Hiya, Kelly. Kerry, nice to see you. Wah! She would wail. Then Mother would burst into her son's room next door to confront the boy. Young William was usually reading or playing quietly with his earplugs in. He had endured a lifetime of bawling and had therefore fashioned earplugs out of marshmallows so he could get on with things in peace. Why did you pinch your darling sister? Mother would demand. What? William would reply. It was hard to hear with marshmallows in his ear. And why have you got marshmallows in your ear? William would take out the marshmallow and protest his innocence. I haven't touched her mother, the boy would plead. I've been reading in my room the whole time. From the other room. A likely story, mother would declare. No pudding for you tonight, 
but no pudding for the week, but no pudding for the month. Eventually, the boy would fall silent. He liked pudding, but not as much as his sister. The little girl loved pudding more than even she loved crying. Once at the local bakery, she even offered to swap her brother for a slice of chocolate cake. I mean, it was a large slice, you know, but still. And if there was no pudding for William, Bertha would be allowed to eat his double pudding. Mm. All Bertha could do was roll around in her bed and blubber. On the day our story starts, the two children were left alone in the house. Mother was in the garden tending to her beloved roses and father was mowing the lawn. Spotting that her parents were outside, a fiendish scheme crossed Bertha's mind. It was her most devilish plot yet. The plan was this. Bertha would pull out a clump of her hair and then ball the house down. Then mother and father would come running and the finger of blame would be pointed at poor William. Pulling out a clump of hair would appear to be William's worst crime yet. It trumped pinching, prodding, poking, biting, dead arms and dead legs and he surely would be packed straight off to an orphanage. And Bertha would have Double pudding, maybe even triple pudding for the night, for the rest of her life. It was a glorious plan. Pudding, pudding, and more pudding. The little girl tiptoed over to her brother's room to check if he was there. Indeed he was, quietly getting on with his homework with his marshmallow earplugs as usual. Next, Bertha sneaked back to her room. She looked at herself in the mirror and began phase one of her plan. She reached up to her head and grabbed a clump of hair. Shutting her eyes, she yanked as hard as she could. Bertha didn't need to pretend to cry. The pain was so intense that she couldn't help but yell. She examined the strands of her hair in her hand and a bold spot had made it onto her head. It was about the size of a ping pong ball. Bertha then put her ear to the bedroom door to see if her parents were on the way. Strangely, they were not. So Bertha did it again. <coughs> this time she yanked even more hair from her head. Now, there was another bold spot and this one was the size of a tennis ball. Still, they didn't come running. So Bertha did it again. Wah! And again. Wah! And again. Wah! 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 The pain was so extreme that Bertha's eyes were now stinging with tears and she could barely see what was, what was happening anymore. Yet still she yanked out more and more and more hair. Eventually, wiping the tears from her face, she stared at the mirror. Bertha was now completely bald, except one lonely strand of hair at the top of her head. Just then she heard a noise. Bertha's eyes darted to her bedroom door. <gasps> and to her horror, her mother father and brother were all looking through the door crack. Bertha stared at them at the moment and they stared back at her. How was she going to explain this? Bertha didn't know what to do so she did what she always did. She screwed up her face and began bawling. Wah! It never failed. Wah! Except this time. What on earth are you crying for, demanded father. Because Mama and Dada, the beastly brother of mine, pulled out all my hair, replied the girl through huge theatrical sobs. William couldn't help but smirk at the sight of his little wicked sister, 
who had been well and truly busted. Actually, you still got one hair sticking up the top of your head, proclaimed the boy. Bertha examined the mirror again. It did look rather strange having just one lonely strand, so she plucked it out from between her fingers. Wah! That can't have hurt, protested William. That's just one little hair. Bertha was becoming desperate now. But, 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 but you pulled out all the others, William, you evil little, little wretch. We were standing here for the last few minutes, young lady, began Mother. We saw the whole thing, added Father. The smuggest grin spread across William's face. And it was already smoked to begin with. But, 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 protested Bertha. No doubt you've been doing this all along, accused Mother. But, 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 no pudding for you, young lady, declared Father. Bertha stopped protesting for a moment. Ooh, the punishment didn't seem so bad. Missing one pudding. She had a stash of chocolates under the bed anyway. The girl gave her brother a self-satisfied look. And then, like a prize fighter, Mother delivered the knockout blow. Ever again. Bertha froze. <gasps> this was worse than having no hair. No puddings. But Bertha loved puddings. If she could, she would only eat puddings, puddings, puddings. How could anybody live without cake and ice cream and meringues and sponge cake and eating mess and custard tarts and French fancies and, and chocolate creams and apple crumbles and jelly and splatted dicks and cupcakes and sticky toffee pudding and jam roly poly and trifle and chocolate mousse and brandy snaps? All oh, preferably eaten in one sitting. Really, Mama? pleaded the girl. This can't be true. No puddings forever. Forever and ever and ever, replied Mother, who was mightily cross at her daughter that she had fooled her for so long. Now, every night Bertha would watch her brother across the table, savouring every last morsel of his, of his delicious pudding. But he would also have Bertha's too. Double pudding! Most evening, Mother would give William her own pudding as well to make up for his harsh treatments over the years. Triple pudding! Often then, the boy would then be allowed to eat his father's pudding too. Quadruple pudding! It was torture for the girl to watch her brother eat all her favourite pudding night after night after night while she did not have one crumb of one. Bakewell tart, Arctic roll, eaten mess, William would lick the balls clean. To make matters worse, under the table, the boy would pinch his sister's leg as he scoffed away. <laughs> he pinched me, Bertha would cry. Nobody ever believed her. Bertha the blubber had blubbed too many blubbers. Oh, well, that told her, didn't it? That showed her. Oh I, oh, I fancy pudding now, actually. Do we all fancy? Let's go and have some pudding. Go and have some pudding. And go and have your cocoa. Go and have your magnificent cocoa and your pudding. Thank you very much for listening to me, like boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, and we will see you tomorrow at 6.30. Bye! <laughs>